All right, we're on. We're ready to go to talk about these college football playoff top 25 rankings for week number 10. That's right, 10. Week 10 of the college football season um, in 2018 has come and gone. Now, these are the updated rankings by the committee for week 11. And this is my, oh, uh, this is going to be a rough, rough time tonight to talk about these rankings because I have a lot of nitpicks and questions and just a lot of things in general about these rankings tonight. And... To all you out there in the YouTube world, view uh, videos like mine, um, other guys who um, do um, college football related videos like this and everything, you're, you're just going to see my face, of course, obviously, um, talk about these rankings. I don't have no special gadgets or anything, no special, like, um pretty pictures and let I guess to um, you know, really get the flow going so we're just gonna start off here on um, the top four is very simple um, the three undefeated got Bama got Clemson you got Notre Dame and then at number four you have Michigan this is gonna be the top four anyway um, Notre Dame is of course in front of Michigan because they beat them now I want to get that out of the way first. Notre Dame is in front of Michigan because they beat Michigan with Brandon Wimbush. That was before Ian Book got the starting job at Notre Dame. So, and I mean, honestly, at this point in time, I feel that both Notre Dame and Michigan are kind of like equals at this point. I mean, sure. Notre Dame did beat Michigan, but I mean, yeah, I mean, Notre Dame is still struggling um, at times to kind of run away with these games, and I feel that's going to be a problem for them coming down the road now that they've gotten, um, they've beaten Navy, and they've beaten Northwestern. That, that was, Northwestern game was really going to be difficult, and they didn't really put away Navy like they wanted to, and I really think that they should have did better in that aspect. Um, as far as Michigan goes, they are they are the clear-cut favorite right now in the Big Ten with no losses in conference play, and really it, all that's standing in their way now is Ohio State. That's really it. Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship possibility. Um, so all Michigan needs to do is play. Just keep, keep it up. Keep up the scoring. Keep up keep up the, doing Shea Patterson on these um, quarterback runs and whatnot. Just keep it up. Play physical D. Play physical O. That's all you got to do, baby. That's all Michigan needs to get into the playoffs. Just keep it playing physical. Number two is Clemson, and it's no it's no surprise it's Clemson. I mean, they've been boat racing the ACC like it's nothing, and, you know, I wonder if Clemson's gonna even get beaten this week by Boston College. Um, I think they might, but that's like a very small chance that, that Boston College will beat Clemson this week. They're like a 20 and a half point favorite or something like that. And yeah. Yeah, Clemson. They are they just been blowing people out of the water. It's it's crazy. Um you know with Trevor Lawrence, Etienne, that that star studded defensive line and everything, they've just been doing what they want to do. Number one of course is Alabama. They just imposed their will. They didn't even. They didn't even have to score. They didn't even have to score twenty nine points, and it really wouldn't have mattered. It could have been. It could have been 
three to nothing at halftime. Two will talk about Loa, even though his even though his knees still hurt. His knee is still messed up somehow, and he still scored like three touchdowns, and now Alabama still put up like nearly 600 yards of total offense last week against LSU. I mean, you gotta you gotta be wondering what can it take to stop Alabama this year? And I think the only thing that can stop Alabama is to his knee. That's about it. It's Alabama, then Clemson. And then, you know, everybody else that we'll talk about in a minute. Defense was imposing just nine punts, nine drives. No points scored by LSU. Like 12 rushing yards, only like 100 or like about 200 yards of total offense for LSU. Just, it was absolutely ridiculous. And let me talk about LSU right now. Why the hell is LSU ranked number seven in the nation, huh? What the hell has LSU done to deserve being ranked number seven? That is what I do not get at all. I do not believe that LSU should be ranked number seven. In fact, I believe they should be ranked um, probably 10, 10 or 11. And there's a reason why. And you're not going to like the reason why that I say 10 or 11. But most mostly the 11 part. But... 10th, at the very least, sounds good for them. Um, yeah. Joe Burrow, still the same, just inconsistent as hell. Um, the run game, when actually put up against the good defense, you know, I don't really consider, like, uh, Auburn or Mississippi State really good or anything like that, but... That's, that's just the way it is because of the SEC bias, which is evident in this poll once again. There's a lot of problems with this poll, but I'm going back to LSU real quick. LSU does not deserve the number seven ranking in the nation. What has LSU done? I mean, I know there's teams that are ranked in here that say that LSU has done something, but... To be honest, really? Nah. Not at all. Yeah, well, and then you can, I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, oh, well, if you had the toughest schedule in all of college football, I have one of the toughest schedules. We all knew Miami was trash. I don't see, I don't see why people were so high on Miami in the first place. Like, you, as soon as Miami started taking L's at the L, at the L last year, you and Rozier was still the quarterback. I mean, I know um, the Perry kid, he's not really that great either, but it doesn't matter. Miami was trash. Auburn, Auburn disappoints me, but we'll get into them later because they are indeed ranked, I have to believe. But Miami? Miami. Y'all trying to tell me that Miami was deserving of anything at all this year they're not LSU beat the brakes off of Miami it wasn't it wasn't really even that close but to say that oh well, uh, uh, well LSU's this great team no they're not they've had like one or two good offensive showings and then they've just been kind of dead in the water for the last several weeks now. I mean, sure, yeah, the Georgia game, it was great. Fantastic for them. But that was a month or so ago now. Florida, they didn't look great, and they lost. Mississippi State, they didn't look great. They only scored 19 points. If they, if they want to be taken seriously, they need to score more than 19 points. Yeah, they held Mississippi State to three, but... They need to score more than 19 points. It was the same problem with Michigan early on in the season. The same problem still with Notre Dame. They can't score. LSU still can't score. They have all these five-star wide receivers around them, and they just can't get it together. They have a grad transfer. Uh, they have a transfer from Ohio State that should be able to throw the damn ball around, but they still can't do it. They still can't get it done, and that's just a fucking pointing. You know, they have a good defense, 
But when their defense actually plays somebody, guess what? They get fucked. They get fucked real bad. And, you know, it's the same thing with LSU every year. It's been that way um, for a long time now. N not even going back, going back to 2011 too, when the year that they should have played Oklahoma State in the national championship. Yeah, it's been that way for a long time. Just because Les Miles left does not mean that the cha that that the changes with Ogeron and everything, like it, it just doesn't equate. It doesn't add up to anything at all. You need to chill with the LSU hype. It's not, it's not what you think it is. Anyway, going back to um, going down the polls here, Georgia's number five. They beat Kentucky. They are going to play Alabama on December 1st on CBS, obviously, so we all get the bitch and moan about Gary Danielson again <laughs> for another week. Um, yeah, they, they played real good. To be honest, George played well enough, but the real question is now is can they hang with Alabama? That's about it. Uh, if Georgia somehow, I don't know how, but if Georgia somehow stumbles in between that, um, in between that time frame, don't be surprised if you if you see something like LSU or something like that jump up ahead of, of Georgia or something. It, it's probably something stupid. But, I mean, you know, this committee, the six new members that are in the room, and the whole uh, Frank Beamer thing that Joel Klatt brought up. I don't know why he brought that up. He just, I guess he just assumes that there's like a whole ACC bias or something like that. But we'll get to that later. Um, so, yeah, Georgia's number five. At Oklahoma's number six. Oklahoma's defense is still trash, and they need to fix it. It's looking like what I am afraid of, which is going to be that Oklahoma and West Virginia are going to probably knock themselves out of the playoffs. Just not, just not going to, not going to lie. The Big 12 championship, as I've said before, is one of the dumbest things that, um, unless, unless we can add two more teams, looking at you, BYU and, 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 and Louisville, you remember that. But anyway, we could add added BYU and Louisville. Um, back in, back you know, a couple years ago, I don't know the reason why I say Louisville is because I mean you know Trevor Park for West Virginia BYU obviously because they need somewhere to go. I mean we we should be able to work around the the Sunday shit and the, and the anti um, gay shit and whatnot. So that's a whole other situation. It doesn't really matter. But yeah. Oklahoma needs to fix their defense before it gets too late. Kyler Murray's playing out of this world. I mean, he does have better numbers than Tua uh, for the most part. So does Dwayne Haskins, too. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's probably not going to be his highs. I mean, it's going to be Tua's. Let's just be real. Tua's probably going to win the highs and slap him at the through an interception for the first time this year, but yeah, it's just the Kyler Murray show down there. They have a lot. They have some injuries too. Um, but yeah, that defense is not fixed. I don't know. I don't know what you would call that. That hint game against Texas Tech. That that was not good at all. Forty-one points. I don't care if it's Big Twelve defenses. I, I don't care. You know. Yeah, you you have to. You've got to fix that defense real fast or else Will Greer in West Virginia is going to light it up all over you with the four receivers that they have, um, especially Stills, because, I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. And watching that game, you know, the two-point conversion that got botched in Oklahoma took it back, that was probably going to be the only thing that really... Um, that really sealed the game away because otherwise that game would be going on for like nine overtimes. Not gonna lie, it'd get fucking crazy. Number seven, we already touched on LSU. Number eight is Washington State. Now, Washington State's a surprise to see. 
in in the top ten. It's like, whoa, Washington State, they've never really done anything at all. But Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew played uh, fantastic on that last drive. Up, on, up until that last drive, he was playing like shit. The whole team um, against California was playing like shit. They were tied. Missing kicks and everything. Everybody was missing kicks. Missing... Just missing all around. But Washington State, they have the opportunities in front of them. They just need to win. That's all they need to do right now. That's the first objective, remember. The first objective is to win out. Second objective, hope for chaos. So hopefully Washington State doesn't lose anywhere down the road, especially in the Apple Cup or in the Pac-12 Championship. Don't lose, guys. You guys still have a chance. Mike Leach, Air Raid. It might be a fun time. Playoff. Number nine is West Virginia. Why West Virginia and Washington State oh, and Ohio State too, unfortunately. Um, why West Virginia, who allowed 40 points to Texas. God damn it, Longhorns. But anyway, that's not the point. What a fantastic play by Will Greer. I'm not going to lie. That was a fantastic two-point fake um, to get into the end zone to win the game and beat my beloved Longhorns. And the same things apply to West Virginia as it does to Oklahoma. Are they going to knock each other out? Can West Virginia play some goddamn defense? You know, you have Will Greer. You have um, Stills, the wire, one of the wide receivers anyway. That's the only one that I can name. But you have, you have all those weapons on the offense, but can you play some damn defense? If you play defense, you will win some games. Sorry, this Big 12 defense crap is not going to fly like it did last year in the Rose Bowl. You guys got to play some defense. You got to do something. That's all I got to say on West Virginia right now. I don't really have much else to say about them. Ohio State is number 10. Why the number 10? I have no idea. But I mean, they had to put somebody in number 10. The committee did. And it wasn't going to be LSU. SEC bias, but yeah, Ohio State still looks like crap. I'm sorry, but that performance against Nebraska was not that great. I mean, yeah, Nebraska kind of fucked themselves up with that botched kick and everything. Just it was just a bad performance by Nebraska all around. But you know, Dwayne Hassan's still playing well. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, Weber, those two guys still playing well. Those two good running backs, but defense still looks like crap. <laughs> it's just not adjusting on some of these plays. And, you know, Nebraska just ran the ball down their throats. It wasn't even close. It was just rough to witness, to see Nebraska run the ball like that. And the game was close for a long time until Ohio State finally put it away. Ohio State, you guys got some problems, and you guys need to fix it, or else... You're going to have three losses or something like that. Because if you guys lose to Michigan and Michigan State, that would be pretty fucking rough. You have Michigan State this week, you got to do better. Hope you guys play better this week so you can move on up a little bit. Hurry up and fix it. Number 11 is Kentucky, and that is a big no for me. I'm sorry. Um, Kentucky played like shit, like they have been for the entire season, for most of that game against Georgia, and I have no idea why. That's puzzling to me, personally. Um, I mean, obviously now that Kentucky is out of the um, SEC championship race and everything, you know, it's just it's just not what I would like to see. Um, Kentucky at eleven, they, I feel that they don't deserve to be at eleven. Maybe, um, well, actually, yeah, I, I do think they deserve to be at number eleven. I'd actually drop LSU even more, 
honestly. <laughs> um, number 12 is UCF. You guys, like UCF, you guys are getting a little bit obnoxious. Not gonna lie, but as of now, you'd be playing LSU, and LSU has no offense, so therefore. <clears throat> I would just go on ahead and say that LSU would lose to UCF. I'm just keeping it real. UCF did have some problems last week against Temple on a Thursday night, but they should be able to take care of Navy easily. Navy is just not that good of a team this year, and hopefully when we get to December 8th, yeah, yeah, kids, it's not going to be good for Navy on, on that day. When the Army plays them, it's not going to be a good day. But UCF being at 12, I think that just kind of puts the nail in the coffin for UCF's playoff hopes as of right now. There's still some time left. Don't worry, UCF fans. You have like a 1% chance, but there's a lot that's going to have to happen for that 1% to be fulfilled. And you have a lot of good games coming up. You know, maybe next week that's not really but I do believe here's the good thing I do believe that the that the committee will have their eyes glued on you and Cincinnati on Saturday night November 17th because there's not a lot of good games that week I do believe the game day will go and I do believe the main the main boys Herbie Fowler they'll be going on down um, to either um, Cincinnati or, or Orlando to see y'all guys do what you do best, which is play to win the game, as Herm Edwards would say. And I think that will be important for the committee to see. So, But that's next week. This week they're playing Navy, and UCF can't really adjust to the option. Well, might be an L. Honestly, I don't think so, though. No. Um, it'll, it'll, it could be in one of three games after the Navy game. It could be. I don't know. I don't know about UCF. Because Newton's still playing good. You know, the defense looks like shit. Kind of like, kind of like, it, I don't know. It just, it's just been shitty defenses all around. You know, Ohio State, Oklahoma, West Virginia, UCF. Just shitty defenses. It, that, 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 Y'all gotta fix y'all's damn defense. Shit. It's annoying as hell, but what the hell is this? Syracuse at number 13. Are you serious? You're serious. Yeah, you're definitely serious. They moved up six spots from last week. Um, Syracuse doesn't really have anything left going for them besides Notre Dame. And I guess they want to push that Notre Dame-Syracuse game as a top 15 matchup, I guess. But I honestly don't think that Syracuse has the has the capabilities to beat Notre Dame. If they couldn't, if they couldn't correct their mistakes against Clemson, um, with that balanced, that very balanced, I'm talking about the good kind of balance that Notre Dame does have, not the shitty kind where their offense plays like shit and defense just well, wins the game for them. But Syracuse at number thirteen kind of puzzles me. I mean, I don't hate it, but it's just kind of puzzling. The same thing with North Carolina State. North Carolina State has not done anything, really, to deserve being number 14. But I guess that is what it is with all these two and three lost teams in the, in the polls. Um, I, I don't really know. Florida has three fucking losses. And so does Mississippi State. They also have three losses why both of these teams are even here why florida especially is at number 15 i have no idea they got both raced by missouri but again how do you keep getting how do you keep losing to missouri missouri hasn't had a good year since 2014 how does that keep happening you guys keep losing to the same team what is this and mississippi state they did beat they did beat Texas A&M, I believe. Right. 
or am I wrong? I'm pretty sure I'm right, but yeah, Mississippi State beat Texas A&M, and yeah, that, that's totally fine with me. I don't, I don't see a problem with it at all, honestly. Um, kind of, not really. It's just SEC bias, to be honest. Uh, Boston College, number 17 in the damn nation. Oh, boy. Boston College and their running back, A.J. Dillon. They, they, give me some, they give me some chills. They give me some good chills. And I have a, I have a feeling that Boston College will beat Clemson. I have a feeling. I have a gut feeling they'll beat Clemson. I mean, honestly, Clemson hasn't really been tested all that well this year. Um, aside from Syracuse and aside from Texas a and but Texas A&M has three losses, so who gives a damn about a and Fuck them. So Boston College, the key to moving on up is beat Clemson. That's about it for you guys. All you got to do is beat Clemson. Michigan State is at number 18, and I have no idea why. Honestly, they should be around the 20s range, somewhere. But I mean, I can't, I can't really say much about Michigan State. Um, all you gotta do is beat Ohio State, and that'll, that'll kick Ohio State out of the playoff for good. We won't have to talk about Ohio State anymore. Honestly, but. Yeah, that's kind of surprising considering the way Michigan State has been playing half the damn time. Yeah, they've been playing like shit half the damn time. It, it's kind of it's kind of like it's kind of like LSU. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like LSU to be honest. But at least LSU doesn't have three losses yet. Yeah, Michigan State got got fucked up by by Michigan. They just couldn't do anything against Michigan. Then they turn around and um, just then they turn around and just beat Penn State, you know, and everything like that. But but Michigan State at number eighteen, it's kind of surprising. I don't know why, but it's just there. My Longhorns are at number nineteen, and I honestly don't really know why. To be honest, we don't have very good wins anymore. Um, and the losses that we do have are just, well, I mean, we do have one good win, but that's Oklahoma. Fuck Oklahoma. But, I mean, other than that, we have a bad loss to Maryland. We struggled against Tulsa. We struggled against Baylor. Uh God. It's just kind of rough for my Longhorns, but honestly, I do believe that the Longhorn should be around the 20s range, too. Any three-loss team should be around the 15 to 20 range, to be honest. Yeah, just... Yeah, that's a big no for me, Chief. I'm sorry. Penn State 6-3 and three, took a fat L to Michigan. Got blown the fuck out. Why the hell are they in the rankings still? They have three losses. The... The Saquon Barkley factor is obviously in play now. <clears throat> Trace McSorley has not looked great half the damn time. And, I mean, Penn State kind of just got throttled on defense. Michigan could do whatever they wanted to do. You know, like, I have no idea why. I just really don't. Iowa, who lost the fucking Purdue. You gotta be goddamn kidding me. How do you lose to Purdue? I have no idea. Iowa's kind of a wishy-washy team for me, once again, because they're just... It, I haven't seen a lot of Iowa, but they have three losses, so... Honestly, the spots that... that uh, Texas, Penn State, Iowa. Um, in this next team, Iowa State, who has one of the best resumes in the country now they're five and three they're about to be bowl eligible soon but yeah Iowa State they're pretty interesting with that Purdy guy um, starting for them they they're inching closer and closer to maybe a big 12 title berth that'd be fucking surprising wouldn't it 
haven't really talked about Iowa State that much, but I mean, you know, there's a there's a real possibility that there's a Big Twelve title game looming for them because they do have the tiebreaker over West Virginia, baby. They don't have the tiebreaker over all home though, but tiebreaker over West Virginia does matter. Number 23 is Fresno State, and uh, I haven't seen Fresno State at all this year, but I do know that they're going to play Boise State next week, either this week or next week, uh, probably this week, I think, I don't remember, but yeah, they just, they just stayed where they were at number 23, they didn't move up at all, don't know why they didn't move up any going to move up at least one spot. Come on. Auburn is number 24. It was either them or Mississippi State to beat Texas A&M. I can't remember now. But Auburn at number 24, they have a they have an opportunity to get knocked out of the top 25. Let's just be real. Full loss teams don't really bode too well for me in the top 25. I mean, this year's already weird as it is. And with Auburn being ranked now, especially with that terrible loss to Tennessee, just a shitty ass loss, you gotta wonder with Jarrett Stidham, Gus Malzahn, and that offense not looking the way it has been, you gotta wonder, um, well, what what can what can Auburn do against Alabama? What can Auburn do against Georgia this week? What can what can what can Auburn do? Can they pull the magic rabbit out of their ass like they have been doing for years and years now? Or or no? Uh, hopefully, we'll see something with Auburn, something good, something that'll get Bama and Georgia a loss. And then we can only take both of them. <laughs> Washington rounds up the top 25. Um, honestly, I don't think that they'll stay there, to be honest. Pac-12 is just that bad this year. It's been bad for most of the playoff era. And the fact of the matter is the Utah got kicked out. The top 25 for getting beat like that against Arizona State, I believe. And, you know, I mean, yeah, Washington has... Some, some meh kind of wins and some meh kind of losses. But hey, Washington's, Washington's ranked. The Apple Cup could mean something this time. Could mean something this year. Now, it probably won't, but, you know, so I do believe Washington State will stumble down the road. It's not a matter of how, it's a matter of when. And whenever Washington State stumbles that Apple Cup, um, either this week or next week, or in the Apple Cup itself, or in the Pac-12 Championship, I do believe that Washington State will stumble. Now, as far as some honorable mentions go, in the top 25, um, I don't really have any, to be honest. Utah State's not ranked. Why are they not ranked? Didn't they just, didn't they lose to Minnesota? Or something like that. I can't remember who lost to Minnesota. Fresno State lost to Minnesota. Utah State lost to Michigan State, which is a better loss. I don't know, you tell me. Utah State should be ranked somewhere. Probably should take Penn State's spot, but that's just me. Or Iowa's or Texas's or something like that. Just, just give Utah State some love, please. Cincinnati, they are a young and resilient team. Why the hell are they not ranked? I know they lost the Temple. The Temple is a sneaky good team. Temple is real sneaky. I don't know. I don't know why they're not ranked yet. <clears throat> UAB, how about the Blazers, with only zero losses on the sea. No wait, they have one. They haven't lost to Coastal Carolina. That's probably why. But they've been doing what they do best, which is dominate. <laughs> Who would have thought that reviving a program like UAB would give 
them so much confidence and so much luster to get on the winning track. It's it's amazing to see how UAB has progressed since they've been back. And I like it. I like it a lot. Why they're not ranked, I have no idea either. That's the only three that I can really think of that aren't ranked and should be ranked. Boise State, no. Um, can't really think of any other two lost team. I don't think there is any more two lost teams. Really. Yeah, that's about all I can think of as far as honorable mentions that should be ranked go. Yeah, that'll just about do it. So, separation Saturday, we clearly saw some separation. Not the separation we wanted, but the separation we got. Nine or ten top 25 teams losing. And some of them probably should have shifted out of the polls like Utah did. But, you know, I digress. That'll do it for me. Big boy out. I'll see you guys next week with another reaction to the top 25. Peace.